Hey everyone, and welcome to another video. In this video, we're going to be talking about how to improve your advertising click-through rate, specifically the click-through rate of your Google search ads. I get a lot of questions in my DMs and emails, and it's really uh, quite a simple set of questions that I get, and it doesn't really make sense for me to try and sell these people on coaching services or try and manage their accounts themselves because um, these are folks who are dealing with pretty low spends. They're just trying to figure out how to run their Google ads. And so I thought, you know, I'll make a diagram that really walks through a simplified version of my process that I use for improving my own click through rate and my own advertising and copy. Uh, if you don't know me, I'm Alex. I've done about 10 million in spend and probably 50 or closer to 100 million in revenue off of. Uh, Google search ads specifically for different clients. I've been working on Google search for well over AdWords. I run a small agency called Darlington. We offer some management services and I also offer some coaching services. Those will be linked down below, but long story short, I have written tens of thousands of ads and I have a very simple process for determining what are winners, what are losers, and how do I continue to improve um, accounts, ads, and the copy of those ads in order to have really incredible click-through rates and also deliver on conversions. But today we're going to talk about purely click-through rate. So let's start here. So I recommend that you start with exactly one campaign and I'll zoom in so we can see. Start with one campaign and ask yourself the question, what keywords am I targeting within this campaign? And specifically specific, uh, specifically select one ad group. And you're going to wanna to select one ad group because you can have different keywords per ad group and there's a lot of different keyword themes that you may be going for, especially if you watch some of my other videos about stags and skags. And so we wanna really refine one ad group at a time. So next step, are those keywords relevant and specific to your ads? And if they're not, all you have to do is turn off those irrelevant keywords. Very simple. You wanna make sure every single ad group has a specific purpose, whether you have skags, stags, haga cure, just keep it away from that terrifying Frankenstein ad group one that I see in a lot of accounts every single day. Just turn off the irrelevant keywords, focus yourself, focus the ad groups, focus the keyword targeting, and that will help you focus your ads. Next up, after you've done that and you have your specific keywords, do the ads that you have enabled match the search intent of those refined keywords? So you might wonder, oh, how do I do this? Go to the insights report on the left-hand side of your screen in Google ads, and then go to the search terms tab. And then if those search terms that people are actually searching, not the keywords, but the search terms, match your ad intent, you can move on to the next step. So if not though, you need to rewrite your ads to be more relevant. Uh, there's a lot of different ways to do this, but in general, you wanna make sure that your ads speak to the user. They don't talk about your product. They speak to the user, what the user's problem is, and you also have a solution to that problem. That's really the biggest thing that people make a mistake about is they'll go right into search and they're just talking about their product. They're talking about like their free shipping or, or, or other benefits that they have. And really it's more about talking to the specific user and the specific user's intent in that five second period that they're making a search and they are clicking on whatever stands out to them. And what's going to stand out to them is a solution to the problem that they're searching about. So rewrite your ads. After you've rewritten your ads, this is a quick check. Does your landing page have a relevant URL? And you might wonder why. Well, having a relevant landing page URL will affect your click-through rate. We're not gonna get too much into quality score as a whole, but part of quality score is landing page experience. And so if you can not only make your landing page have a relevant URL, but also feel relevant broadly in terms of the headers that are on the page, the product, that is on the page and how that matches to the search. All of that's going to help quite a lot. And those are best practices I recommend, but we're not gonna get into them in this video. Just make sure your landing page has a relevant URL because when I'm searching for, you know, size 10 men's sneakers, I'm, you know, I'm going to be more likely to click on the page that says men's sneakers, doesn't have to say size 10, right? Men's sneakers, as opposed to 
men's shoes, for example. So next up, are your response ads fully filled out, your responsive search ads? So do you have all 15 headers and do you have all four descriptions? If not, and you're not doing a special strategy like a fake ETA or uh, the other types of things like that to try and get around Google's rules around responsive search ads, make sure that your RSAs are filled out. This is going to help your deliverability. It's going to help Google find more best combinations. And it's overall, uh, we have to work with the AI here and we have to fill out all the responsive search ads to give the AI the best chance to not only deliver our ads, but also find good combinations of click-through rate. And the, the caveat here is you don't wanna just fill up your responsive search ads with a bunch of junk headers. You really do have to think about this and come up with 15 different headers and descriptions that actually makes sense for the product and the business. So after you've done that, do you have two ads running per ad group? So this is a very simple question, uh, but this can get tedious depending on how many ad groups that you're running. So keep that in mind. If you have two ads running against each other, you're missing out on a big opportunity for experimentation. So the answer here is just write another ad. And then oh, I accidentally duplicated that this is going to be something else in the final product. Uh, if I get enough interest in this flowchart, I will publish it and I'll just have a publish link either in the description section or in the comments. Uh, but let me know. Uh, I don't want to do it if it's not helpful or interesting, but uh, if it is, I'll, I'll publish it. So just let me know in the comments. So next up, are you using exact match? Well, you can use other match types, but quality score is going to be based and evaluated on your performance on those exact match queries. So if you are buying, um, for example, broad match, phrase match, and exact match versions of the term, uh, you know, email marketing agency, for example, the only uh, query that you're going to be evaluated on for your click-through rate is queries that exactly match email marketing agency, for example. So because you're going to be evaluated, on those exact match performance. You wanna make sure that you're including exact match in all of your ad groups. And when you're looking to assess performance of your ads, you wanna look at specifically the performance of those exact match keywords, and then optimize around those metrics as opposed to the overall uh, for all of the different match types. Okay, and so if you are using exact match and you have two ads running in your ad group and you have your responsive search ads filled out, and your landing page has a relevant URL, and your copy matches the search intent, and you are targeting the right keywords per ad group that are relevant to all of your ads, do you have an above average expected CTR? Now, expected CTR is a part of quality score. Quality score is broken up into three factors. Expected CTR, which is another way to say competition, and we'll get into that in a second. Ad relevance and landing page experience. So going through this flowchart, you're going to not only improve your expected CTR, but you should also be improving your ad relevance. So we're tackling two out of three of the pieces of quality score. We'll get more into ad relevance in another video. And I've already made a really great video about uh, quality score as a whole. So definitely go and check that out. But do you have above average expected CTR? I would expect that if you went through all of these steps to the left, and you did it in a really effective way, you would definitely have an above average CTR because if you are truly matching someone's intent and you are doing it in multiple different ways with multiple different types of messaging, a good product, et cetera, you are going to have a good click-through rate. It's not rocket science. You know, People look for stuff and they are gonna look for a solution to their problem. So if you offer that in an effective and clear way, you're going to perform well in the market. The only cases where you're going to run into potentially more problem, even if you're doing this as best you can, is going to be hyper competitive industries where you're just basically competing against a bunch of me's, uh, a bunch of people who are just have been doing this for a really long time, decade plus, know exactly what they're doing and know the industry that you're in. For example, insurance, uh, law firms, uh, you know, a bunch of the medical sector, for example, um, pharma, right? Those are really good examples where you're going to be in hyper competitive um, areas and it's going to be hard to get that ex above average CTR because the competition is just so strong. Uh, that being said, if you do have above average uh, CTR, the next question is pretty simple. Are you happy with your ads performance? 
just having a high CTR, you know, maybe maybe you get to the high CTR through clickbaiting. Well, if you're clickbaiting someone, you're not necessarily going to have really good conversion rate. So you might have high CTR, but low conversion rate. And that's actually a, a sign that your high click-through rate is actually bad. It's not helpful. So if you're not happy with your ads performance, despite having click-through rate, you might want to think about how you're actually getting those clicks. And does it make sense the way that you're routing people um, through a journey to your product? So if you have a high click-through rate, a low conversion rate, it could be your landing page. It could also be the promises that you're making within your ad. And you don't want to overpromise and then underdeliver when someone comes to your landing page because otherwise they're just going to bounce, right? So we want to be realistic when we're writing ads, even though we want to also have really good marketing. And so if you're not happy with your performance or you haven't been able to go through this flowchart and achieve an above average expected CTR, and uh, you've already subbed to the YouTube channel, I recommend you go on this ad test marathon. So I'll zoom out a little bit. Um, um, all right, so the ad test marathon. So this is, uh, let me see if I can make myself a bit smaller here and then we'll zoom out so we can see all of it. Go over here, great. So if your ad groups that have those ads in it and the specific keywords that you're trying to improve they don't have an above average expected CTR, you need to go check and see if the two ads that you have in that respective ad group, and if they don't, you just need to wait. You need to wait for them to both have 200 impressions because 200 impressions is right around where you can start to gauge performance. Just think about it. If you had a 10% click-through rate, that would be 20 clicks per ad. And that's just barely enough, you know, really, if you have a lot of impression volume, I would say wait for 500 impressions, wait for even a thousand impressions. If you can, if it's within your scope and budget and timeline, um, waiting longer is going to give you a better chance of making the right decision in terms of ad performance. Uh, but 200 is usually enough. You know, if you see one has 10% CTR and the other has, you know, 2%, it's going to be really obvious which one you should turn off. And that's where we get to the other side of it, which is if both of your ads have 200 plus impressions, you should pause the lower performing ad. And then next up, uh, you should definitely watch some of the other videos on the channel if you're still struggling with this because I do get into how you can speak to your users and potential new users and uh, new customers in a really empathetic way and really speak to their problems as opposed to saying, oh, I've got this cool product because nobody cares about your product. They care about having their problem solved. And so definitely, you know, I recommend subscribing and, and watching those videos, but that's my plug. So. Other than that, write a new ad and wait about three days. Depending on your impression volume, you might need to wait more like a week. You might also just need to wait 24 hours. And then after that new ad is in market, you wait that amount of time. And then you want to go check again and see if your expected CTR has improved. If you make really rapid improvements to your ad quality and your ad CTR, right? you're going to see expected CTR improve very fast as well. This is an aspect of quality score that if you just start crushing the competition, you can see this metric uh, change really like within a week um, for specific keywords. Uh, the only cases where you might have trouble improving this metric more, uh, more quickly is if your account historically has a really low quality score overall. Just because if you've been, you know, say you've been working on Google ads for a year or so, and the entire year you've been doing like really bad advertising, like three out of fours, four uh, or three out of tens, four out of tens, right? Five out of tens. Don't go out the gate expecting, oh, I'm going to launch stuff and I'm going to be 10 out of 10 quality score. I'm going to have above average in every category. It's just not going to happen. It's going to take you some more time to prove to Google that, hey, you're not this bad advertiser anymore. Um, you're really improving and doing things by best practice. But that's about it. Um, this is the flowchart. Again, if you liked it, you you want to have access to this, just let me know in the comments and I'll clean it up and um, publish it um, and add some FAQs that I usually get over email from others um, just so that we can all have that as a resource. Um, but other than that, I hope you, uh, I wish you a lot of luck um, with your ad writing process. This can be very difficult, uh, but I completely believe in your ability to improve your expected CTR and uh, we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.